Interview questions and answers related to the validation of analytical methods. Welcome to the world of analytical method validation. If you're stepping into the realm of pharmaceuticals or just curious about how we ensure the reliability of analytical methods, you're in the right place. Validation is a crucial aspect of the pharmaceutical industry, ensuring that the methods we use to test products are accurate, precise, and trustworthy. In this interview-style Q&A, we'll explore some common questions about method validation, covering everything from the basics to more advanced concepts. Whether you're a seasoned professional or a newcomer, this friendly guide will help you navigate the essential elements of validation in analytical methods. Let's dive in. 1. What is method validation? Answer, method validation is like a quality check for analytical methods. It's the process of making sure that a method works reliably, giving us accurate results for whatever we're testing. Think of it as confirming that our tools are ready for the job. Two, why is method validation important in pharmaceuticals? Answer, validation is super important because it ensures that the methods we use to test pharmaceutical products are reliable. This means we can trust the results, which is crucial for keeping patients safe and meeting regulatory requirements. Three, what are the key parameters for validating an analytical method? Answer, there are several key parameters, including accuracy, precision, specificity, sensitivity, limit of detection, LOD, limit of quantitation, LOQ, robustness, and recovery. Each of these helps us assess different parts of how well the method performs. Four, can you explain accuracy in method validation? Answer, absolutely. Accuracy is all about how close our test results are to the actual value we're trying to measure. We check this by comparing our results to a known standard. It's like making sure we're hitting the target. Five, what is precision and how is it measured? Answer, precision tells us how consistent our results are when we repeat the test under the same conditions. We measure it by running the same test multiple times and checking how similar the results are, like getting the same score on a test every time. Six, what does specificity mean in the context of analytical methods? Answer, specificity is all about focusing on the target analyte without interference from other substances. It's like making sure we're only listening to the music we wanna hear without background noise getting in the way. Seven, what are LOD and LOQ? Answer. Great question. The limit of detection, LOD, is the smallest amount of analyte we can reliably detect, while the limit of quantitation, LOQ, is the lowest amount we can accurately measure. They help us understand how sensitive our method is. Eight, how do you assess the robustness of a method? Answer, we assess robustness by testing the method under slightly different conditions like changing the temperature or pH to see if the results stay consistent. It's like seeing how well you perform in different environments. Nine, what role does recovery play in method validation? Answer, recovery shows us how well we can retrieve the analyte from a sample after testing. High recovery rates mean our method is effective in capturing the analyte without losing it, like catching all the fish when you go fishing. 10, how often should analytical methods be revalidated? Answer, we should revalidate methods whenever there are significant changes, like new equipment or materials, or if we notice unexpected results. Regular reviews can also help keep everything in check. 11. Can you explain the difference between internal and external validation? Answer. Sure. Internal validation happens within the lab, using our own methods and equipment. External validation, on the other hand, is done by independent labs to confirm our results. It's like getting a second opinion. 12. What documents are necessary for method validation? Answer. We need several key documents, including a validation protocol, raw data, a validation report summarizing the results, and any related standard operating procedures, SOPs. These documents help us keep everything organized. 13. How do regulatory agencies influence method validation? Answer. Regulatory agencies like the FDA and EMA set guidelines and requirements for method validation, which helps us ensure that our analytical methods meet safety and efficacy standards. Following these guidelines is essential for getting products approved. 14. What challenges do you face during method validation? Answer. Some common challenges include variability in results due to different equipment, 
finding suitable standards for comparison, and keeping up with changing regulatory standards. It can be a bit of a puzzle sometimes. 15. What strategies do you use to overcome validation challenges? Answer. We collaborate closely with team members, plan thoroughly, and follow well-defined protocols. Performing pilot studies can help us spot potential issues early, making the process smoother. 16. What is the role of statistical analysis in method validation? Answer. Statistical analysis is key to understanding the performance of our methods. It provides us with objective data on parameters like precision and accuracy, helping us make informed decisions based on validation results. 17. How do you ensure that personnel are trained for method validation? Answer. We provide comprehensive training on analytical techniques, validation procedures, and regulatory requirements. Regular refresher courses and hands-on training sessions help keep everyone sharp and informed. 18. What software tools do you use for method validation data analysis? Answer. We often use statistical software like JMP, Minitab, or R for analyzing validation data. These tools help us perform calculations and generate reports, making it easier to interpret our results. 19. Can you share an example of a successful method validation project? Answer. Absolutely. One time, we validated an HPLC method for a new drug formulation. We carefully evaluated accuracy, precision, and specificity, and demonstrated that our method was reliable, helping us secure regulatory approval on time. 20. What advice would you give to someone new to method validation? Answer. My best advice is to thoroughly understand the guidelines and principles of validation. 21. What types of analytical methods require validation? Answer. Almost all analytical methods used in pharmaceuticals require validation. This includes techniques like HPLC, GC, UV vis spectroscopy, and even methods used for microbiological testing. Essentially, any method that impacts product quality needs validation. 22. What is the difference between qualitative and quantitative validation? Answer. Qualitative validation focuses on whether a method can identify the analyte correctly, while quantitative validation measures how much of the analyte is present. Both are essential but serve different purposes in ensuring method reliability. 23. How do you ensure that the method remains validated over time? Answer. We perform regular performance checks, review results periodically, and maintain good documentation practices. Any changes in processes or equipment trigger a reevaluation to ensure the method remains valid. 24. What role does a validation protocol play? Answer. A validation protocol outlines the plan for how the validation will be conducted. It includes objectives, methodologies, acceptance criteria, and timelines. It's like a blueprint that guides the entire validation process. 25. How do you handle deviations during validation? Answer. When deviations occur, we investigate the cause and document it thoroughly. Depending on the findings, we may need to adjust the method, reevaluate results, or even conduct additional testing to ensure everything remains compliant. 26. What is the significance of a method transfer? Answer. Method transfer is the process of transferring a validated method from one lab to another. It's significant because it ensures that the receiving lab can reliably produce the same results using the same method, maintaining consistency across locations. 27. How do you select reference standards for validation? Answer. Reference standards should be well-characterized and of known purity and potency. We often select standards that are recognized by regulatory agencies or established in the scientific community to ensure reliability. 28. What is system suitability testing? Answer. System suitability testing is performed before running samples to ensure the analytical system is functioning properly. This includes checks for parameters like resolution, sensitivity, and baseline noise. It's a quick way to confirm that everything is ready to go. 29. Can you explain the term method life cycle? Answer. The method life cycle refers to the entire journey of an analytical method, from its initial development and validation through its routine use, maintenance, and eventual retirement or replacement. Managing the life cycle helps maintain method integrity over time. 30. What challenges can arise during method transfer? Answer. Challenges may include differences in equipment performance, 
variations in environmental conditions, and potential operator differences. To mitigate these, we provide thorough training and conduct method validation at the receiving site. 31. How do you document the validation process? Answer. We document every step, including the validation protocol, raw data, analysis, and the final validation report. Good documentation is essential for compliance and provides a clear record for audits and inspections. 32. What impact does method validation have on product development? Answer. Method validation ensures that analytical methods are reliable, which is critical during product development. It helps identify issues early, supports regulatory submissions, and ultimately contributes to the safety and efficacy of the final product. 33. What is a Validation Master Plan VMP? Answer. A VMP is a comprehensive document that outlines the overall strategy for validation activities within a facility. It covers everything from analytical methods to equipment and systems, ensuring a systematic approach to validation. 34. How often should system suitability tests be performed? Answer. System suitability tests are typically performed before each analytical run to ensure that the system is functioning properly. If issues arise, additional tests may be required during the run. 35. What is the role of cross-validation? Answer. Cross-validation involves comparing results from different methods or laboratories to confirm consistency. It's a way to validate that different approaches yield similar results, enhancing confidence in the methods used. 36. How do you handle updates to regulatory requirements? Answer. We stay informed about changes in regulations through training, attending industry conferences, and subscribing to relevant publications. When updates occur, we review our methods and protocols to ensure ongoing compliance. 37. What steps do you take to ensure data integrity during validation? Answer. We implement strict data management practices, including secure electronic systems, audit trails, and access controls. Regular reviews and training on data integrity also help maintain high standards. 38. How do you assess the feasibility of a new method before validation? Answer. Feasibility assessments involve reviewing the method's theoretical basis, resources required, and potential challenges. Pilot studies can also help determine whether the method is practical before committing to a full validation. 39. What is the significance of collaboration during method validation? Answer. Collaboration between teams such as analytical, quality assurance, and regulatory affairs is crucial for successful method validation. It ensures that all aspects are considered and that everyone is aligned on objectives and requirements. 40. What advice would you give to new analysts about method validation? Answer. Don't hesitate to ask questions and seek guidance from experienced colleagues. Familiarize yourself with guidelines and best practices, and remember that method validation is a learning process. Stay curious and open to feedback. Thank you so much for watching this video. We hope you found the content informative and helpful as we explored the important aspects of pharmaceutical microbiology and laboratory testing. At PharmaTox, we are committed to delivering valuable insights, expert knowledge, and the latest updates on pharmaceutical practices and innovations. If you enjoyed this video and want to stay updated on everything related to the pharmaceutical industry, be sure to subscribe to our channel. By subscribing, you'll never miss out on our in-depth discussions, interviews with industry experts, and practical tips for success in the pharma world. Don't forget to hit the notification bell so you're the first to know when we release new content. Whether you're a student, professional, or just someone interested in pharmaceuticals, PharmaTox has something for everyone. Thank you again for your support, and we look forward to having you as part of our growing PharmaTox community. See you in the next video.